On days like today, people come to you and they say, see, it's not a store of value, it's too volatile. How do you respond to that? I think investors who are allocating to crypto know that volatility is going to be part of it. Most of the investors we're dealing with, though, are not looking at short-term price movements. They're not looking at short-term volatility. Their crypto allocations are really over medium to longer-term time horizons. So I don't think people feel terribly phased when they see you know, sudden movements in the market like this. Are they phased when it acts like any other risk asset, though? Because I thought the whole idea was it's a diversification play, but then it falls in line with stocks. It certainly is a diversification play for a lot of investors. It is a differentiated return stream. But on days like today, when there's market fears, it doesn't really seem like there's anything, any asset class that can really, you know, avoid some of that liquidity coming out of the market um, and a lot of that deleveraging happening. How are you thinking about liquidity in the market? We're showing the Bloomberg Galaxy Crypto Index. We know, of course, your trust trying to talk about when the SEC will allow an ETF and then the discount, of course, that's behind that. How much of that is an integral to providing not only confidence, but liquidity in the market as well? Well, so you're referring to Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, our flagship fund, uh, trades under symbol GBTC. And even though there is no Bitcoin ETF today, investors aren't waiting to add crypto to their portfolios. GBTC is doing hundreds of millions of dollars a day in notional trading volume. And it really is, for many investors, the easiest way for them to add crypto exposure alongside stocks, bonds, ETFs, other things they may own. And so over time, as the fund continues to grow, I certainly think we'll see liquidity in the product grow as well. What about the 42 million GBTC shares that are due to release from July 12th to 22nd as a lockup that expires? Mm -hmm. Is that a short-term issue that investors are talking to you about? What, what sort of pressure does that exert not only on GBTC but also Bitcoin price itself? Will it go higher or lower? I think a lot of in, not only investors but people in the press have been wondering what the effect of the fund growing so large will do now that some of those shares are unlocking. Um, it's a little too early to tell, but what we have seen is with GBTC trading at a discount to net asset value, a lot of investors, particularly institutional money, has been stepping into that trade, realizing that that capital can actually help them own or control more Bitcoin than it would be if they were buying Bitcoin in the spot market. So ultimately, we do see that NAV, um, that progression back towards NAV happening. Um, and in the longest case scenario, it would be an ETF that would arbitrage away any discount yep. to net asset value. And you talk about investors stepping into the market. How have flows looked as of, as of late? I'm thinking Bitcoin and also Ethereum as we were chatting with Mike McGlone. I think investors, you know, for the most part, have a lot of them, their Bitcoin or their Ethereum allocations. Certainly now the trend amongst investors is to have diversity within their crypto holdings. So looking at other assets to build out their portfolios. And I think a lot of them are really starting to get excited about some of these new use cases of digital asset protocols that are starting to pop up. Let's talk about that because, of course, Grayscale DeFi Fund is what you're mm -hmm. just announcing. Yep. New fund, of course, Coindesk DeFi Index is sort of where it's going to be tracking DeFi, decentralized finance, what sort of opportunities are people wanting to get exposure to by going into this? Well, so decentralized finance or DeFi is really traditional financial services meeting decentralization. So for typical users, typical investors, typical consumers, they're going to banks and brokerage houses um, and other service providers to get lending, to get borrowing, uh, to get exchanges. And DeFi really represents the opportunity to do that in a completely decentralized fashion. And this is a new hot area of crypto that we really think investors have been telling us is an area they want exposure to. So launching a fund that gives them that targeted exposure to a wide array of digital asset protocols in the DeFi space is a really attractive opportunity and we're really excited to launch this fund for them. What is that targeted opportunity that investors are saying we want access to? I'm the rookie, Joe Weisenthal's out, Caroline does this all the time, explain to me. Well, so I think DeFi represents a new subset of assets within the broadly defined crypto space, right? We've seen Bitcoin emerge as a store of value, Ethereum emerge as really the gas to power decentralized applications. We've seen the emergence of stable coins. We're seeing the emergence of DeFi protocols. So we're starting to see various assets come up that have new and differentiated use cases and investors are eager to get exposure to them. Exposure in particular, when, when they can also be getting into GBTC as well, which is trading at a discount that has continued. I mean, when, how much are you seeing come investors wanting to move between your products? Is it going to be totally new types of investors coming? How much are you seeing some sort of cannibalization within it? 
I don't think we'll see cannibalization. I think, if anything, again, this trend towards diversification is a really important one. This is Grayscale's 15th fund. We certainly have a lot of investors who've invested across all 15 funds as we've continued to be a pioneer and bring new products into the market. And also, as investors are increasingly looking to us to provide them with these interesting opportunities, sometimes before there's even enough market sentiment to really identify them and you know, really think about it as simplified access. Your due diligence, of course, it's, it's focusing on Coindesk DeFi index. Of course, we've seen protocols not always work as intended. How do you ensure that you're protecting people's money when they're getting into these DeFi space? So when we look at the DeFi index and now the DeFi fund that will be based around it, every quarter different assets will be included or excluded from the index itself. And so there's qualification criteria that must be met. So over time, as investors stay invested in the fund, they'll remember and see that the assets with the greatest value, the greatest exposure within DeFi will remain in the fund, and those that you know, are starting to fade away will be disqualified from the fund's holdings. Last question, Bitcoin. I mean, at what point is it coming by? Because I hear there's all this institutional <laughs> yes. money sitting on the sidelines wanting to get in. So I'm never one to make price targets or price predictions, um, but I can tell you based on who's investing in the market, um, the sizes of the allocations that they're making and the convictions that they do, that I think the opportunity for Bitcoin remains very, very bright.